प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू यू आई पाथ एक्सपो हब चैनल एंड हिट द बेल आईकॉन बी द फर्स्ट पर्सन टू वॉच द लेटेस्ट ऑटोमेशन वीडियो हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न वॉट प्रोसेस शुड आई ऑटोमेट इन आरपीए प्रोजेक्ट राइट सो वेन यू आर टेकिंग अप अ प्रोजेक्ट इन योर कंपनी you know you'll be given you know we are doing this work manually do you know run a automate automation project on this one do something for us so now as a team um, you know you need to decide or how can you decide which process should i automate mean robotic process automation right this is a big decision because many people are not aware and they go about trying to automate just everything okay and i'll tell you there will be a significant failure in your project if you do so so you have to know certain rules uh, for robotic process automation so the first goal of robotic process automation is not to eliminate humans right humans are necessary but the work which is very repetitive and mundane right those kind of work can be done by a robot so humans are necessary so we are not planning or the pl goal is not to automate just everything that we are doing manually no that is not possible nor we should look for it so what are those rules how should i excuse me for this so how should i um, automate everything right i should know so the very first rule it, it should be a highly manual and a repetitive process so when i say it should be highly manual and repetitive process that means uh, let's say in a day you are one person or one employee has to do some 30 transactions 40 transactions right 20 transactions or maybe even 10 transaction but again they are time taking each transaction is time taking so uh, so you have to see let's say in a, in a month we are getting uh, 20 transactions so that is not a uh, highly manual the volume is quite low so you have to see um, you know you have you are, you are the judge to understand whether it's a highly manual and a repetitive process right so you being the judge uh, decide if it is a high number of transactions that somebody has to do right and if it is highly manual okay so that is our one of the first question we should ask and huge amount of manual work and high chances of human error so same thing i have to you know let's say there's a report i have to generate every day and i have to send it to a couple of people day the i have got some 10 reports i have to generate so there are so many such examples or some data fading work i have to do right lot of employees we do that i mean we go and update certain data every day on a dashboard and things like that so and there are entire team is sitting to do that or giving access to certain applications so you gain some request and you have to every day you have to process them and your process remains the same you know it does not change so you have to decide whether it's a high highly manual and a repetitive process okay that's the point number 1 now the point number 2 the input so that your input could come in a email could come in a excel file could come from an application right so your input should be a standard readable electronic input okay so let's say think for an example a written bill somebody has written on a paper or a, on a bill right this is the amount so everyone's handwriting would be very different so those kind of things cannot be automated even though that's manual but it's still not be automated because it's it's not a standard readable electronic input because our ocr engine may, may not be able to understand the handwritten bill okay this is the second point we should remember what is my input how the input is coming is it standard readable electronic input so your answer is yes then go for it okay this is the second point uh, that you should look for now couple of other pointers and very very important pointers okay this is rule based process so when i say rule based process where you start where you end what are the conditions when i should take right when i should take left so in terms of a flow diagram you think right so it should have a standard process flow a decision flow right if this happens or if this is the case then do this if this is the case do that if so in a business process you can think of lot of such examples where which are condition based and process based so that is the point that you need to remember it should have a standard process flow or a decision flow to complete the task okay so start and end point and you know the decision how to move where to go if this happens where to go and do the job if this happens where to go and do the job right those kind of rule based process 
okay so if your answer is yes to this then proceed to the next one low number of variation in the handling procedure so what is the meaning of low number of variations that means um, so you your process is very standard okay so let's say uh, there is a condition if the age right if if the let's say the experience of the employee is less than two years right then do this so so what is that you have a very standard so the variation variation in the sense today you have a standard process tomorrow you will say no, no 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 that should not be the criteria the criteria should be changed so those things should not be there if that happens, that should be in very low in number so in future if some process or variation happens then you have to again start designing the entire workflow right so the variation should be very low i don't say it should not happen at all it should it will happen right there will be service improvements there will be changes so if that happens that variation should be low in number so that if if i have to work on a project which has already been delivered so i can do it in a quick time so i don't have to if there are a lot many variations okay this has changed this condition has changed that condition has changed so then that is not an ideal process if you expect those kind of variation could happen so that kind of a project is not an ideal project to choose in case you choose you will be in trouble you know dealing with the people who had given you the task because every now and then they would ask okay change this just think for example uh, let's say uh, when when customer is looking for certain things right you provide him a link and uh, he has to go to that link and fill a form let's say and if that links keep on changing somebody is making some changes to that and the link gets changed so every time if the link gets changed the hyperlink address gets changed so every now and then you have to come and uh, update your uh, workflow right so those kind of things you have to be very very careful if you're trying to automate such things you need to understand if there are high variations then you should not choose that as a project okay because that will put you in future trouble it's not like you cannot do it you can do it but again maintenance will be a high cost you have to have employees to again you know redo the work so the maintenance cost will be high so if the cost is high then why you want to do the automation when somebody has to do it manually let them do it manually right so if there is a lot of variation let them do it manually if you are automatic something that means there is standard one you are you don't have to put again manpower and put some employees take their time so every employee's time is a money and you don't want that okay so this is a very important point you need to remember low exception rates or low number of variations okay the next one is mature and stable process so mature and stable process what do i mean everything is very standardized so you have not seen a change in the process for the last couple of years so it's very mature there's no chances of improvement in the process that's exactly how it has been done from last two three years um, uh, so any kind of time i don't try to decide a timeline but again you should be the judge to know okay this is a very mature and stable process so you should have the background of that process what it is how many times it has changed in the in the past did you change the process flow when was that happened so when you ask such questions who is giving you the project you will get to know so you can straight away say no i can see in last two weeks there are two process changes. this is how the flow is supposed to go now you are saying this is how it should go so if such kind of variations are there it's not a very mature process so this should not be automated first of all your process should be very standard very matured one low number of variation that's where we will take this project okay so those kind of questions should be very clear in your mind okay next one not to automate a process where the application or the platform will be changed in short term so what is the meaning of this one that means let's say there is some some kind of you know user interface is going to change uh, the appearance of the application is going to change so there is a lot of cosmetic change is going to happen or they are going to move to a, some other application there is a new application going to replace the existing application so those are the areas you should not even choose you should ask these questions before taking up the project right are you expecting any kind of application change will there be an upgrade are you going to replace the application when is that right you have to if he says it is going to happen after one and a half year then oh, it's okay one and a half year we can have built a project and give it to those employees and you know a lot of time could be saved so it's fine so you are the judge so these are the pointers of the rules you have to always ask such questions before taking up a rpa project 
okay uh, right and another uh, good thing you have to always think what is my savings or what are the savings so if i automate this process um, uh, let's say there are 10 people working in that right they are daily doing the same manual stuff uh, and you know each person is completing 20 transactions day in a day so there are let's say 10 members so 200 transactions per day is completed right so now you have to think if i automate this now all of these people this manual work what was being done you know it's going to save a lot of them so this 10 employees we can have only two employees to look at couple of exceptions which the automation cannot handle so the two so instead of 10 people i can have uh, two employees and eight employees will be freed up and they can be given some other critical work where humans are needed right so i'm saving the ft it's called fte full-time employee savings which you should have minimum of two that's recommended two three like that so minimum two uh, full-time employees time you should be able to save so those calculations should be done uh, before taking up a project so this is a more of a information for you which you can utilize so that you are not in a mindset of automating just everything that you see okay uh, you have to think through all of this so this point is would help you to streamline and decide what is that i should automate and what is that i should not automate and what are those reasons why i should not automate right so once you have this clarity in your mind this is going to help you a lot while taking up projects in rpa thank you very much for watching this and i feel i can create a small bot uh, just by running the bot you know it can just tell you okay your project is suitable for rpa or your project is not suitable for rpa right so a small bot can be created so let's wait for the next video thank you very much for watching this guys as i always request you please do like all the videos that you are watching on our channel and please do subscribe to our channel in case you have not done it Okay, do not forget to like, hit on the like button. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day.